I'm Steve from Jackson Interface Shelter, and today I have Mike Brown, the Executive Director and CEO at Jackson Area Transportation Authority. Thanks for being with us here today. You're welcome. So I appreciate what JADA does. So they are the, the public transportation for the community, um, and they, with, with Jackson Interface Shelter, a lot of the folks that we serve uh, don't have their own transportation, so it's, it's a huge service to those that we're serving. Um, and then when COVID first started, we actually, there was a, a couple of weeks that we needed to move a lot of the folks staying at the shelter to hotels. So we kept some here, but then we also were able to spread people out as COVID was just starting. And uh, Jackson Area Transportation Authority loaned us a couple of buses for free <laughs> and they just transported big groups of people um, in, in a very quick amount of time. And then when the time was up, they brought them back here. So, so they were just a huge blessing and help during that time as well. So excited to have Mike here today um, and just talking about uh, what they're doing. So Mike, if you want to just kind of give a little bit about your background, you know, who you are, how long you've been with JADA, um, and just how you kind of got to this point now where you're at there. You must have a long time. Exactly, yeah. Right? <laughs> so now, okay, so I'm Mike Brown, uh, director of Jackson Transit. Um, I started out at Transit uh, as a driver. Okay. Um, I was laid off from Michigan State University, and um, I decided I didn't want to sit at home and do nothing, so I kept coming out and applying for a job, and five days later, they hired me. All right. And I started driving the bus. How long ago was that? Uh, that was in 1987. All right. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, I only drove the bus for a short period of time. So with my ma uh, background in management, um, they were looking for people to put into management. So I was um, asked if I wanted to apply for another job that came up and advancing myself through it. So I went from driver to dispatcher, from dispatcher to uh, coordinator, uh, medical services, medical transportation, from coordinator to street supervisor okay. to assistant operations director. I finally made it to operations director and human okay. resources and director of maintenance. Right. Uh, and then my most recent uh, change in 2016 was uh, CEO and executive director for Jackson Transit. So it's been 35 years. All right. You know, <laughs> insides and outs, you've kind of worked yourself up from the bottom. You, you, you can understand your different staff because oh, you've yeah. been in those roles. Yeah. Um, and, and one thing I was interested to find out just as I've learned more about JADA um, is that you're mostly unionized, that the majority of your staff is part of the union. So can you talk a little bit about just it is. roughly how many staff do you have and then a little so bit about your connection with the union? We're still a small agency. Um, we're, we're considered federal government uh, as a urban, a small urban. Okay. There's large urban, small urban, and then there's rural agencies for transportation. And ours is considered a small urban. Um, we only have about 52 employees. At one time, we had 107 because okay. we were doing Head Start transportation at the time. Okay. But we're back down to like 52 employees right now. Out of those 52 employees, uh, I want to say close to about 37 of them are union members. Okay. Uh, of those of those employees, uh, the union is the Amalgamated Transit Union, so it's part of the UAW. Mm -hmm. um, we have on board a board, our union president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Um, but I tell you, the relationship is great. We, mm -hmm. we, it's not an adversarial relationship at That's all. Right. Um, we've been able to resolve all contracts without third party um, uh, interest at all. Okay. Okay. Just, just real good group of people to work with. Okay. They understand the mission of Jackson Transit. They understand the purpose um, in serving in the community, and so you know they're just on board. Okay. That's great. Um, and can you talk a little bit about, um, so is, is JADA, is it a for-profit, is it a non-profit, is it under the city of Jackson's mm -hmm. government, so, so how, what's, what's that structure? So Jackson Area Transportation Authority, JADA, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we are a non-profit government uh, uh, entity okay. as far as the FTA is concerned. Okay. Um, what that means is that we're a public transit agency, um, we are not a part of the city or the county, Okay. Um, we are our own private authority since 1980, since 1996. Okay. We became a private authority in 1996, which meant that um, we don't have to go through uh, MDOT, Michigan Department of Transportation, to get to seek federal funds anymore. We're a direct recipient for our funds from the federal government now. Um, we can directly ask them and do our own application and contracts and so forth and so forth. Um, there, we're called City of Jackson Transportation Authority okay. because we, of course, operate in the city of Jackson, um, but we're not a city department, a county department. Um, I love them both, but <laughs> no, yeah. just not a part of them uh, of fish officially. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, again, 
our, our body is uh, FTA, Federal mm-hmm. Transit Administration, uh, Michigan Department of Transportation, MDOT, okay. up in Lansing area. And then our local uh, funding, which is our city millage and then um, personal, uh, private contracts. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the services you provide? So, I mean, I think people would notice the big buses going sure. around, kind of like a normal city, mm-hmm. and it's got the little bus stops, but I know you do a lot of other things um, for, you know, with, with smaller buses, mm-hmm. with those that are disabled, mm-hmm. and also have different services, like watching school buses and, you know, yeah. having fuel services and things yeah. like that. So could you just kind of hit on some so, of the extent of what you provide? Okay, so what we try to do is we try to be an overall <clears throat> uh, community transportation service and transportation doesn't doesn't stop at just getting a ride mm-hmm. so <clears throat> that's why we do <clears throat> excuse me the uh, maintenance services um, things of that nature so first of all we have our fixed route service the big buses that run up and down the street downtown yep. <clears throat> and they travel on the big figure eight and they go back and forth uh, around town mm-hmm. uh, every half an hour and every half an hour they come back to the hub or the transfer center downtown mm-hmm. and they make transfers and the buses go out again mm-hmm. uh, on that figure eight uh, route. Um, we also have the reserve ride and reserve ride is a, a door-to-door service. Mm-hmm. Um, actually it's a curb to curb service. <laughs> I'll correct myself. It's a curb to curb walk service. Curb. <laughs> yes. Um, and a person's expected to at least make it from their residence to the curb of the bus. Then the driver will get out and assist them in the bus off, off the vans okay. and so forth and so on. Unless the person's in a wheelchair or disabled in any fashion, or unless they ask for assistance, mm-hmm. we can give them an arm, we can push a wheelchair, and we can steady a person as they walk with a cane and things like that okay. uh, to get them in and out of the vehicles. That's our reserve ride service. We currently have a new service called um, RTW. We call it Rise to Wellness. Okay. And Rise to Wellness um, is a little more personalized. Um, in fact, um, you the drivers are expected to do more. Mm-hmm. They're more of a personal care attendant rather than just being a driver. Okay. They'll carry you your your um, uh, oxygen tank for you if you need to. Okay. Uh, your extra bag that you may have along with you. Um, they'll seat you in. The, they'll take you into the doctor's office to the door rather than mm-hmm. just. Um, at a curb, okay. um, they'll come to your residence to the door. They won't cross the, th- the threshold, okay. but they will come to the door and assist you outside and into the vehicle and all that. Okay. Um, the Rise to Wellness program also goes a little further. Um, a person can now schedule a ride uh, to the doctor's appointment, and the doctor says, "Oh, now you need prescriptions." Okay. So we can schedule that same ride with that same driver to take them now to the pharmacy and okay. get the prescription before they go home. And then the doctor says, well, we changed your diet because of whatever reason. You need to make a grocery store stop. Mm-hmm. We can add another stop in and get the person to get the proper food from the grocery store and then get the person home without having to make multiple appointments yeah. two or three different days at a time. We'd like to know in advance right yeah. away if we can. If we can't, we try to on demand work it in with the driver that there is. And it may mean leaving that person there and the second driver coming by and getting them based on their schedules. Right. But um, we try to get the job done in one day and all okay. the services provided at one time to minimize the amount of time a person has to come in and out of the house. And right. uh, especially seniors or disabled people who don't want to you know, make that transition back and forth that, that many times. Um, some of the other service we have is we provide bus washing. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just for 5013C nonprofit organizations. We have to be a nonprofit organization like us because we're trying to of course help you because right. we're in the same boat that you are in yeah. uh subsidized by either state or federal funding yep. and and need that little assistance to help get over the hump yep. so we do provide that um, bus washing uh at a real minimal cost as well as uh, maintenance services for the vehicles okay. um and things of that nature so um yep. again we try to touch all bases that we can but at the same time you know we do focus on the bus ride so, so with some of those other certain, <clears throat> so like does Jackson Public Schools, are they? Uh, Jackson, Jackson Public Schools, schools is part of that. Um, Good Lake Public Schools. Okay. Um, the City of Jackson, uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, Summit Township. Okay. Um, I can go on and on and on yeah. of, of organizations we have. There's a long list of those, probably about 28 or more. So that helps us streamline their services and not, not need to have additional Absolutely. services because you can help with that. Yeah. Yeah. For the rights to wellness and some of those other things, are those partially funded through Center for Family Health or can people use Medicare, Medicaid, or how, how do they pay for some of those services? Uh, the main uh, 
payment part of that is probably a uh, human uh, department of health and human services. Okay. Uh, if, if they have, if they have insurance due there, then, yeah. then we use we bill them for the ride itself. So if they don't have aging or something like absolutely. that, absolutely. Our agency is a partner with us. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford is a partner is a partner with us. Okay. Um, uh, don't want to miss speaking, but there are a couple of more partners that I'm just not yep. totally not aware of right this minute. Right. Uh, we do have a coordinator that runs that department yep. <laughs> that's on top of that part of it for us. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and they um, help partner. Some is just funding as far as um, paying for the ride, and mm -hmm. others are funding to help support the actual program itself. Okay. Uh, the expenses, salary expenses. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask a question, and if you don't know the answer, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, what would be a rough estimate of a number of people that are using some of these services, whether it's kind of the main kind of buses or rides to wellness? Would you mm -hmm. have that off the top of your head? If not, no problem. I know I didn't specifically say. I can say, there, I, but. I can say our annual ridership is about 590,000. Okay. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Our annual ridership. And that'd be if like um, one person rode every day, that'd be 365, mm -hmm. but. Okay. Yeah, five hundred ninety thousand. Um, and that would seven. include all the services. That okay. would include uh, the fixed route, the reserve right, and the rights to wellness service. Okay. So over a half million folks being served, or yeah, people utilizing the opportunities. Um, and then what's kind of a rough breakdown, like for your funding? Is it more kind of state of Michigan, federal dollars, donations? Mm -hmm. Since you're a nonprofit, so what's kind of a general? The bulk of our funding is from FTA. Okay. Um, FTA. I'd say, well, maybe not. FTA and MDOT are kind of neck and neck okay. when it comes to our funding um, because at the state level, um, sometimes you can get you know, a little more accomplished yeah. <laughs> funding-wise based yep. on your needs, and then you can't affect the FTA federal level. Um, it's it's called an, uh, an a, a, a apportionment. Okay. And the apportionment is, of course, um, they base that on the population. Uh -huh. So if you're 199,000 or less, okay. then there's one um, uh, budget that you get. And if you're over 199 or 200,000 or more, then there's a different uh, budget. So there's really only kind yeah. of two pots that you can. And then there's called, we call it a capital expense money. Right. And that's um, uh, for rolling stock devices, mm -hmm. uh, building uh, expansions and things of that nature that right. you can ask for specific funding for. Yeah. Um, it is still nothing guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It is still, you know, competitive funding there. You're asking for it along with all the, all the other transit agencies and not only transit agencies, but others, some other transportation agencies as well mm -hmm. um, to see, you know, who can tell the better story right. uh, to sort of get the money sometimes. Yeah. Um, but FTA, MDOT, and then our local city military. We totally request our city yeah. millage has been the most consistent okay. yeah. uh, than anything else. Uh, the city people here, they understand the need for transportation. Um, they support us hands down. That yeah. millage passes like six to one. Okay. That's a five year millage. And by the way, it is up for renewal again. Okay. Uh, a little it'll, plug. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be expiring this September okay. uh, uh, 2022. Okay. Um, and it will be on the August 2nd primary ballot. Okay. Uh, 2022 to vote for public transportation. Okay. Um, so. You know that's um it's definitely a need and and the citizens understand that the city under they understand it loud and clear yep. um so we are appreciative of that and we know that they they're going to come out and support us once again right uh to continue to support the transportation okay. can you talk a little bit about since since you are a nonprofit and, and you know you've been around for a lot of years um what's the mission of jada so jada has our mission is to provide of course safe affordable mm -hmm. dependable mm -hmm reliable transportation and other related services. Okay. So it may not just, like I said, it may not just be a bus yeah. on the road. It may be other related services. We may partner with another agency in town mm -hmm. to accomplish something. We may be a sponsor right. uh, with another agency to, to accomplish whatever that goal is that the agency may have set you know, at that particular time. Mm -hmm. um, we volunteer a lot <laughs> of our own personal time that, uh, outside of uh, just a uh, a bus or a dispatcher or somebody answering the phone or taking a ride. Yep. Um, so we try to contribute in many ways and all ways that we can yep. uh, and other community partners as well, not just Jada. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I hear since you uh, used to be a driver every once in a while, when they're in a pinch, you might uh, I still got my license. driver's seat. Yeah. <laughs> you get still going. got that CDL? Yep. Yep. And, and I'll do. I'll, well, before we cancel service, yep. before we tell the passenger no, yep. um, we're going to 
shake every tree, every limb, yeah. go to every desk, find out who can hit the road running. Right. Uh, there are dispatchers that'll take your call and hang up the phone and if need be, have to get in and drive. Right. Of course, they're properly licensed and right. um, trained and all that because most of them were drivers yeah. prior to being a dispatcher. Are there any kind of main long-term goals or visions, you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, any expansions or service changes or things that, that you know, you just kind of, in an ideal world, love to see for Jetta? The, the, the main goal for me, being as I've been here 35 years and I've always been a resident of Jackson County all my life, mm -hmm. um, is to just maintain the regular public transportation service, the bare minimum bones that nothing else, right. maintain that on a regular basis and never ever, you know, let that stop. Yeah. Um, but of course we all got long range goals and we all right. trying to see the future and trying to see expansions and all that. COVID had a big hit on us, a big yep. hit on us. During COVID, um, we lost uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not collect fares. Right. Um, we let people get in and off the back doors of the buses to stay away from uh, staff. Right. We put bus barriers up. Um, we did a lot of things. Right. Right. Ridership dropped, uh, budget dropped, of course, not collecting fares. <clears throat> so we, we're bouncing back. Right. Ridership is on the uprise. Mm -hmm. um, and so that will hopefully correct itself in the short term. Right. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, um, expansion is always on the horizon. Yeah. Um, how we do it is important. Right. As usual, most people want the expansion, they want the transportation. Right. But nobody wants to pay for it. Right. Um, they think for some reason the money just comes out of the sky. Right. <laughs> and here it is, and you know, we should just provide this transportation. Right. Um, we'd love to be able to do that. Um, but there is a cost, you know, right. and um, of course, as much as we want to start here, there, and all that. And the biggest thing that I always see yeah. as a director is that most transit agencies will come up with a plan mm -hmm. and they'll determine the type of transportation that the community or the public or the customer needs, and then right. they'll give it to them. Right. Yeah, uh, we got to start asking the customer first yep. what they need, what they want, yep. what their needs are, and then try and squeeze that in in the most affordable possibly way that we can. Right. Um, and if not, you know, that's when we have to go back and speak to the public and talk right. to the uh, community about, hey, you know, we'd love to do this, but you know, it's going to take a little more right. uh, in order to get it accomplished. How do you go about listening to the community if, if this side of town's not being mm -hmm. served and people say, man, it'd really be helpful to have X, Y, or Z, how do you get that feedback? So in the past, we've had what we call listening sessions. Mm -hmm. um, one of my goals is to reinstate those listening sessions okay. to get them back up again. They're quarterly okay. um, instead of monthly, they're quarterly. But we choose different areas of the town on purpose mm -hmm. um, and we'll publish the meeting. Yeah. And it's just a simple listening. We don't even bring answers. Right. We simply want to listen to your concerns, to your whatever it is. Yeah. Go back to the drawing, not drawing board, but take it back to the agency yep. and, you know, figure it out. Yeah. You know, do we already have an answer for this? Can we get an answer for this? Is mm -hmm. this workable and not workable? Yeah. Um, and things of that nature. Our LTAC, Local Transit Advisory Council, uh, we depend on them. To me, they're our liaison right. to the board because they provide... They deal with a lot of agencies that we don't have contact with. Right. And um, them being advocates of transportation uh, of our, our, our agency, you know, they can get some of that information back to us. They can bring some of those concerns back to us. They meet uh, quarterly as right. well. Okay. Uh, the LTAC, uh, Local uh, Transit Advisory Council, um, that people probably haven't even heard about in many right. times and don't yeah. even really know about. But they meet as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's published as well, just on our website, as well as um, we publish around town, that, you mm -hmm. know, um, places where I'm talking meetings. Okay. Um, and along with uh, overseeing 50 or 60 staff and mm -hmm. driving buses and everything else you do to stay busy, you're also a local pastor, aren't you? So, I am. So where, where are you a pastor at? So um, my church just moved recently. I was on Lee Road Street for a long time. Um, we're on the, um, Blackstone now. We're on okay. the corner of Blackstone and Adams. We, okay. have, those, uh, we have a church building. I call it small because I, I, I'm a small town person. Mm -hmm. Um uh, it's called Solid Rock Ministries, okay. and it's on the corner there. Um, we love uh, the community. Um, uh, I mean, I think to me, it's just been wow—a uh, journey and a half. <laughs> uh, we've been pastoring now since two thousand. Okay, uh, my wife and I are co-pastors. We pastor together. Yeah. Uh, we share the ministry in many ways, uh -huh. um, not just the pulpit, but uh, with the community mm -hmm. and all the other duties and things of that nature, as far as the church is concerned. 
So um, we share, so I don't have to bear all the burden. Right. Um, we also have other, other people in the ministry as well, of course, that you know take some of the load. Okay. But um, it's been, that's part of my life. Yeah. Um, it is part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, as I was telling uh, some people before, you know, that's that's my first and foremost life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my family, uh, my job to me, Jada, is not a job. Yeah. To me, it's, it's my career. It's my life. It's what I do. Mm -hmm. It's a passion that you have to have. Right. Uh, just like for the church, yeah. I have for the agency here at Jada. Yeah. So the two of them work well together because they both what? Yeah. Uh, work in the community. Mm -hmm. um, they're both here to support the community, to take care of community needs. Yep. Um, so to me, the two of them work together well. Yep. Um, I mean, I, I love it. It's, it's what I do, and I probably wouldn't know what to do without it. Right. Yeah. And when does uh, your, your Solid Rock Ministries Church meet? Is that Sunday? So we meet at Sundays at 11.30 a.m. Okay. We also have a Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, you know, you normally get more people on Sunday than you do on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, they're both are open to the public by all means. And um, uh, we live stream our services as well uh, as much as we can on okay. Sunday's uh, Facebook. Okay. Um, so, you know, everybody's welcome. <laughs> um, and then, so kind of lastly, as I wrap <clears throat> up, just is there any final thing that you'd love to share to the community that you just, you know, would love people to know about JADA or ways to get involved or just mm -hmm. yeah, anything at all? Um, I, I would suggest that um, <clears throat> people, um, a lot of people don't know, JADA meets, uh, we have a board of directors, mm -hmm. so the book doesn't stop here. <laughs> we do have a board of directors, a board of nine directors, uh -huh. um, which uh, Steve has to be one of. <laughs> um, and um, they meet monthly. Uh -huh. They meet monthly. Um, now our meetings are being held at the Christoph and Sons Community Building, yep. 400 South Mechanic Street. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and they graciously um, let us use their building there for our, yeah. our board meetings. Um, it's open to the public. It's your opportunity to come in, okay. learn about JADA, find out more about our services, you know, um, uh, talk about what the needs are. A lot of times, uh, we as an agency, like I said, sometimes we think we know it and, and right. don't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think they need more people to get to know the, our board of directors who really, um, you know, run the uh, Jackson Area Transportation Authority yeah. in terms of uh, uh, the um, policies, procedures, you know, the yeah. services, all these things that, that take place with it. Um, secondly, <clears throat> I think um, ride the bus. I mean, just get out and take a bus ride. Yeah. Many people don't know the opportunity that they're missing uh, riding the buses. Mm -hmm. I think uh, another missed opportunity, the, another one that we're focusing on right now as an agency is our new downtown revitalization community that we have now with all these right. new apartment complexes yep. um, and uh, apartment buildings and all. Um, just think how much money you can save on gas, fuel, and insurance right. by parking your car right. and getting on the bus in front of your apartment building, right. going anywhere you want to go in Jackson and coming right back home. Right. Um, I think it's a total misadvantage, and I think that um, we need to you know, talk about that more. Yep. Um, you know, promote that more. Right. Um, take a bus ride. You know, yeah. you let somebody else do the driving. You know, and sit back and relax. These are professional drivers. They're safe behind the wheel. They've been trained properly. They have the proper licensing. They're monitored yeah. um, by a, 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 a operations manager. We do onboard evaluations. Mm -hmm. um, we have customers mm -hmm. uh, that will come in and ride for us okay. and say, hey, you know, give us feedback. And see your shopper kind of thing. On, on your ride. Yep. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, give us a try. Mm -hmm. Give Jada a try. I guarantee you, we won't let you down. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to provide that service for you. We want to be here for you. We want to, you know, be the transportation company or service that you want in your community. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for what you, you do. Thank you for what your team does. And thanks for coming in today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks. thanks.